AMD is team red for the first time. You can do an awesome 5600X and 6800 all AMD build with both CPU and GPU. I'm going to use this red case behind me for team red, and I'm going to give you guys my best tips and suggestions on how to best optimize your 5600X gaming build together with the 6800 and the 6800 XT GPUs. Let's get started. Today, let's talk about AMD's big Navi GPUs that are coming out November 18th. That's going to be the RX 6800 as well as the RX 6800 XT. While we've been talking about these GPUs on the channel, I still think that most likely the 6800 XT, if you can find it, is going to represent probably the better gaming value, but a lot of people surely will get the RX 6800 first because I think it's probably going to be more widely available, and second, it is priced a little bit cheaper at $570. And of course, we know that from the AMD benchmarks that were released, it seems to beat the 2080 Ti by a larger margin than the 3070 did, so we can only assume that the performance is also going to be very spectacular. So for the release of the RX 6800, I'm already getting my build ready. It's going to be this one right back here. I'm going to talk about some of my decisions, what I'm going to use in it, and I'm also going to give you guys tips in order to maximize your gaming performance as well as your performance for the dollar. And I'll go over the build that I'm doing as well. That way you can get some ideas from it. So first, let's talk about the CPU and motherboard. Aside from the GPU, this is certainly going to be a very important element in your system. And if you're planning to get either the 6800 or the 6800 XT, I really recommend that you go for the new Zen 3 Ryzen 5000 CPUs. The one that I'm going to be using in my own build with this GPU is going to be the 5600X. The 5600X has proven itself to be a fantastic gaming CPU, and of course you could spend a little more, get a 58 or even a 5900X, nothing wrong with that, but at 299 the 5600X, I think, especially for the RX 6800, represents one of the best performing CPUs that you can get for the dollar right now. Understandably, it is a $299 CPU as opposed to previous generation 3600, but eventually the 5600 will come at a cheaper price, but even having that price disparity between the current 5600X and the previous 3600, the 5600X is still beating a lot of Intel gaming CPUs that were the top not too long ago. It's even very competitive with the highest end Intel CPUs. So while for $299, certainly it isn't a budget level CPU, it still represents tremendous performance, especially when you talk about the low latency, higher IPC, and very fast boost clocks, which are absolutely essential for a great gaming experience. So at the end of the day, the 5600X will be my choice with the RX 6800. If you're going for the 6800 XT and you have a little more budget in order to be able to really mess around with some higher end components, sure, you can throw in a 5900X in there. You probably will get marginally better performance, but I think at the base level, the 5600X is really gonna give you pretty great performance without too many bottlenecking issues. And of course, one of the primary reasons for me to recommend a Zen 3 processor, that's because of smart access memory. As we saw from some of these AMD benchmarks, it is going to unlock a good 5, maybe 10% in certain games, getting more frames per second when you actually have a Zen 3 CPU paired with one of these new AMD GPUs. So for that reason, I definitely think you get a little bit more of an advantage rather than if you paired it with like an Intel CPU or even something from the Ryzen 3000 series. So that's going to be my primary basis for recommending these CPUs because for the performance that the 5600X is putting out, along with all of the Zen 3 improvements, X570 motherboard improvements, I really think it's going to be a fantastic pairing with the RX 6800 and even the RX 6800 XT. And that's going to lead us to what motherboard to pair with the 5600X. Now, a motherboard that I really like that I've been testing lately is going to be the ASRock Tai Chi X570. Now, this at Micro Center and other retailers, it seems like it comes in at around $269, which isn't really a very expensive high-end price. A lot of X570 motherboards go for well over $300, even $400. So the reason I like this Tai Chi motherboard, first, it's going to be, especially X570, out of the box, as long as you have a newer BIOS it's going to be compatible with Zen 3, and in case the one you buy has an older BIOS that isn't going to boot with Ryzen 5000, 
It also has a BIOS flashback, which is generally going to be a feature that you find on more expensive high-end motherboards. Basically, it allows you to plug the BIOS in USB stick in the back and without a CPU being able to update the BIOS, therefore making your transition to Ryzen 5000 a lot smoother. Aside from that, in general, it has really great VRMs, great cooling performance, a lot of great features. The only thing that I didn't like on the offset was the chipset fan, what they call the SB fan. Certainly was very noisy if you leave it stock even if the chipset was a good temperature. So what you can do here, you can download the ASRock uh, motherboard tuning software. Generally, I kind of don't really recommend all the motherboard software that you have to do in Windows. I like to do things in BIOS. But in this case, I couldn't actually find the option to disable or at least control the fan in BIOS. But that software does allow you to reduce the fan curve, therefore making it pretty silent and it fixes that issue. So overall, for the price, I think you get a lot of great features on this Tai Chi motherboard. So overall, Overall, for the price, I think you get a lot of great features on this Tai Chi motherboard. And I'm using the Tai Chi motherboard in a different build for the RX 6800 build, at least my own personal build that I'm going to use it to test. I'm actually using the Asus Impact motherboard. Now, this one I don't really recommend for most people because it is a D Mini ITX motherboard. That means that it's meant for a small case. In the build that I'm doing here, this is a main year Vibe chassis, while this case can absolutely fit a bigger ATX motherboard. I just really wanted to test out the impact motherboard and I want to keep the flexibility in the future if I move that motherboard to a smaller case I have that option but if you guys do want to build a very high performing mini ITX build impact is absolutely the best you can get on x570 but if you want to do mini ITX I would recommend the cheaper Asus ROG motherboard that's going to come in around maybe $250 and I mentioned basically just x570 because 500 series motherboards like B550 as well as A 520 are going to be the ones for now to work with Ryzen 5000. Now in the next year you will be able to use most likely a 400 series motherboard but you're going to have to wait for a beta BIOS update from the manufacturer probably in 2021. So while there are many great motherboards of course I can't mention them all you should be more than fine with any of the well-known motherboards even B550 if you get something like Asus Strix. MSI also has the Tomahawk. If you get an X570 of course like Asus Strix or Gigabyte any of of the well-known brands x570 most of them are definitely pretty good i just mentioned the tai chi because that's one that i have personal experience with so i can tell you guys that it's really good of course this impact motherboard is fantastic i've used the Aorus master as well before x570 very high performing motherboard and all of these pretty much fit in the realm of using the 5600x without really breaking the bank of course you can go cheaper if you'd like but i really like the x570 motherboards i just think they're just a little more fully featured especially if you want to do a high-end GPU, which the 6800 certainly will be, even though it's the bottom of the stack for AMD, it's still going to be a very high-performing GPU. Now, in terms of the RAM that you should use, I'm just going to say the best optimized RAM still seems to be 3600 megahertz, maybe something CL16. Of course, 16 gigabytes is more than enough. If you want to do 32 gigabytes, if you're going to do content creation, that's fine as well. And now, of course, there are faster kits like 4000 megahertz. I still think 3600 megahertz around CL16 is the sweet spot for really nice performance. Now, in terms of power supply, with something like the 6800 or the 6800 XT, you should be okay with the very minimum 650 watts, but I think I would really try to get 750 to 850 watts just to make sure that you're more future-proof and make sure to get a modular power supply. That way you can sort of exchange your components in the future a lot easier by taking cables out. You don't have to leave everything and make it a, a whole jumble of a mess of wires. So get a modular power supply. I would recommend 750 watts. Yes, you can get away with less, like 650 watts, especially the Ryzen chips are fairly power efficient. These AMD GPUs, like the RX 6800, they certainly have a lot less TDP than something like an NVIDIA 3080, but I still like to have a lot more headroom for a power supply. I certainly like to go a little bit overboard just because the power supply really is at the very heart of your system. And any good quality power supply, like maybe gold, or even if you can jump up to platinum or something like that should be fine in here i have an overkill 1200 watt main gear ignition power supply i don't really think you need it to go that much maybe a thousand watt if you want to run like a 6800 xt or even a 6900 xt certainly with a high-end cpu something like that could be very beneficial 
and with storage, NVMe drives are certainly all the rage. Remember, X570 can take advantage of PCIe Generation 4, Corsair, Gigabyte, even Samsung now. They have the 980 Pro, especially for a gaming system. Generation 4 versus 3 NVMe uh, drives. It's not going to be that big of a difference. So if you can find for cheaper, like a 970 Evo, something like that, even the WD750N, the Black Series, they have very nicely priced, very fast NVMe drives, and you're going to save a little money as well. Well, and in terms of cases, anything that has pretty decent airflow and has the aesthetics that you like should be fine. 6800 and 6800 XT aren't terribly large GPUs, but of course they are going to need some decent airflow. I'm going to be using this here, the main gear vibe. And now this is going to be in red, team red for an all AMD build. That's primarily the reason I chose it. I picked it up a while back at Micro Center. They have other colors as well, like black or, or silver in case you want to do something different. It's a very nice, aesthetically pleasing case. Really has has the builder in mind you'll see when you're messing around with the panels it has a little rgb controller in the back so everything is really really nicely integrated for a builder and it's priced really well usually under 130 bucks of course that goes nicely with the 5600x as well as the 6800 keeping everything within a nice price equilibrium and of course i'm doing liquid cooling here because i've tested a 5950x and i just wanted the most headroom possible with the 5600x you do not have to go that crazy with cooling you can use the included AMD stock cooler, but I would recommend you get a little bit beefier cooler, maybe something from Be Quiet or even Noctua, something that's going to give you a little more performance because these Ryzen chips, even something that only has 65 watt TDP, such as the 5600X, they still love cool temperatures to be able to boost pretty high, especially during extended gaming loads. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed these suggestions for your build. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.